la France, nous sommes depuis les studios Bungie et nous sommes aujourd'hui avec Marty. Hello Marty, how are you? I am fine, uh, très bien, merci. Bonjour, France. Can you that again with the oh, bonjour France. Yeah. <laughs> so, first... A bientôt, no way. Hmm? So I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so first, the uh, French community want to send you the they like your music it's, uh, it's awesome there is no word to describe that uh, yeah it's awesome oh. <laughs> and uh, thank you <laughs> in french uh uh, me uh bonjour uh, merci uh, there we go. <laughs> so uh, and so i'm cool ah, oui. merci beaucoup yeah. merci beaucoup oh. c'est parfait <laughs> <laughs> So, and I, I'm glad to see you, you are okay to make an interview with us for the French community. And mm -hmm. so thank you. Mm -hmm. So, maybe, I don't know, but maybe someone don't know you and don't know your work, so can you introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Marty O'Donnell, I'm the composer and audio director for Bungie, and I've been working with Bungie since 1996. So, it's been a long time. You are very old. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I, Before I speak about Halo, I want to speak about you. So, how and when did you start to work in the music industry? Uh, wow, that goes back a long time ago. I started working in the early 80s in TV commercials and film in Chicago. And um, I didn't get into games until I had already had a pretty good uh, a career established as a composer for TV and radio and film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. after, and after you joined Bungie uh, for one game, uh, Meets... Uh, Uh, the first game I worked on was actually a game called Riven, which was the sequel to Miss, Mist, right? And that was done by uh, Cyan, and they were in Spokane, Washington, and I was still in Chicago. And then we ended up working with Bungie, which is in Chicago, because they were working on a new game called Myth, The Fallen Lords. So that Myth was my second game. So Riven was the first game, and uh, Myth was the first game for Bungie. Yeah, okay. So can you speak a... A little about uh, Mitchell Salvatore. Mm -hmm. we, we never see him in video. <laughs> uh, maybe he don't like. He, he doesn't like that. But uh, yeah, he, he worked with you on the Halo music and uh, and previously on Bungie team. So can you present this personage? Can you introduce th this one? Yes, uh, Mike Salvatore is my music partner, which I who I've worked with since 19 early 1980s, and uh, we actually knew each other even before that in the 70s. We were both in different rock bands and. He had his rock band, I had my rock band. Uh, but we've worked together for years. I, uh, the reason you don't see much of him is because he still lives in Chicago. So if you look at some old videos, very old videos, uh, you'll see Mike. Um, Jim McQuillan, the guy who does all the videos here, has gotten some shots of him. Uh, but he tends to cut him out because nobody knows who he is. So it's a shame. I wish he would show it more. But if you go to the uh, Video Games Live concerts, the... The, the music concerts called Video Games Live. Mike has been to several of those, and he's been up on stage with me, and he's been there when I haven't been there, so he's been on stage for those. So He is out there if you look for him. Yeah, okay. And in the Bungie last Vidoc, Oh Brave New World, we see uh, you make on Twitter a small contest, <laughs> and we, want, we have to find a um, picture of uh, Mike, fan, yeah. you and your wife. So your wife wo worked with you on the Halo, on your well, music work about Bungie? Uh, now, are you saying, did, did my wife work with me? Yes, uh, yeah. sometime. Yeah, she worked. Uh, she actually conducted the choir for me. She's a she's a music uh, major, and she's a mu really wonderful musician. She's w she's way better than me, trust me. And uh, she uh, conducted the choir for Halo 2, So all the choir work on Halo 2, she did she did the conducting for me. And uh, so that was actually, if you saw, it was her shoulder she was conducting, and I was singing dutifully for her in in the picture. And that happened to be the picture we chose. And then the other shot was. Um, me sitting at the recording studio and Mike was right next to me and yeah. the, the shot was just about to pan over and show him okay. but he cut before that happened. We see your wife left the end. Uh, yes. like, okay, okay. And uh, all your family work in the, in the music industry. I, I think your, do your daughter's uh, yeah. work? Yeah. Well, my daughter Christine, who's my youngest daughter, um, is now going back to school to get her composition degree but she's been working uh, as a composer in the last couple of years doing some really nice stuff and she's working 
for a small game company that sort of put together um what are they doing do you know the name of the game they're doing i just forgot something alicia i think that's the name of the game so she's doing music for this small game that's going to be it's a very fun looking platformer that's being done on each, on each console uh for the xbox live uh independent so it's uh, one of the uh, independent arcade Arca games like yeah yeah it's the a xbn is that what it is XBN, XBLA, XBLA. Sorry, yes, that's what it is. And uh, yeah, that should be fun. Well, that's coming out soon, hopefully. She wants to work in the music industry, or you tell you tell her to, you have to work in music because I work. For <laughs> yeah. So if you were old enough to have children, you'd know that you can't tell your kids anything. So as a matter of fact, if I told her to do something, she'd probably do the opposite. So it's actually a, a, a thrill for me to know that she finally decided, like, she's always been a very talented musician, but she didn't really want to do music, at least when she was younger, because both her mom and dad did music all the time. So I think she was looking for something else for a while, and now she's come back to doing music. And I think she's going to be very successful. She's really good. Maybe we, maybe we we you work with uh, her in the next yeah. time. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so well, of course we'll talk about Halo, mm -hmm. and uh, many of uh, our fan of our member want to know how do you proceed in creating your music for Halo game? Wow, I uh, pretty much uh, work with the story guys from the beginning and and the designers and uh, try to get a feel for what story we're trying to tell. And from the very beginning, it was really more about what's the universe that we're creating, what's the what do the worlds look like that we're creating. And then uh, at some point, I sit down and start improvising on the piano. And when something sort of strikes me as an interesting musical concept, then I'll start developing that. That's pretty much how it works. Yeah, okay, okay, and. Um Yeah, I think it's for the Halo 3 trailer. Mm -hmm. We we heard you make the music at the last at the last time, and uh, because you you want to make it uh, at the last time uh, when the trailer was finished, uh, you want to be inspired. That's that's true. Or? Oh, you mean did I do it at the last minute? You know, I wait till the end. Well, the the reason I do that is because um, making the music ahead of time. You might as well just be doing music for a library. I mean, for that you know can be used any place, and it's always much better for me to be inspired by exactly how we're showing something, exactly how the cut is, uh, where the climax comes in the in the video, and then I can write music that fits that. Otherwise, I'm I've already written music, and it doesn't really fit what they've cut or shot. So uh, it's better, in my opinion, because as a film composer. Uh, the composition for a film is always post-production it's always after they've shot after they've edited then then you compose to the picture so that's just my preferred way of working yeah okay okay and uh, i have one other question but i uh, forget him <laughs> so um yeah do you have a very specific method of uh, development for your music yeah. um you know i'm not sure if it's a specific method but uh, it's uh it's something where I like to create something either with um, the piano or strings or something that I'm listening to and I'm playing on the keyboard. And what happens is that I, I try to play something that actually affects me emotionally. And if it does, then I, I start writing it down. And uh, I still use pen and paper or pencil and paper in order to write some ideas down before I actually start recording anything or sequencing something. And that way, when I come back to it the next day, I, I can look at it sort of fresh and see, is there, is there something on that page that still affects me emotionally? And if it does, then I start developing it um, either for an orchestra or for singers, or if I think it should be synthesized and guitar then, and drums, I'll, I'll start going down that road. And then at the same time, I'll, sometimes I'll take a lot of like um, early ideas that are musical ideas And I'll send them to my partner, Mike, who's in Chicago, and I'll say, hey, Mike, see what you can do with this. And he'll, he'll start playing with maybe the same themes I'm playing with, and he'll go in a different direction. And then we sometimes combine forces. He'll come out here. I've gone back there a few times to work together again. So um, that's how we collaborate. We, we, we call it tag team. So, so like he works on something for a while, he sends it to me, and then I, I work on it for a while. I'll send it back to him and, and vice versa. You finish the work. You finish the work. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, you just saw that. I'm not a musician, so I cannot read that. But <laughs> it, it's some music for your for the next Bungie game, or it's it's uh, yes, uh, yeah. Music for the next Bungie game, which I cannot show you, so I won't. 
I will remember. I will remember. You remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the origin of the Halo series with the Combat Evolve. Mm -hmm. So, um, how did it all start? Mm. Wow, you know, I had uh, worked on Myth the Fallen Lords and then Myth 2, uh, Soul Blighter, and we were we at, at the same time we were working on myth 2 there was a smaller team at Bungie that was working on a new game called Blam and it was built in the myth engine it might have been originally conceived of as a real time strategy game but it was going to be a real time strategy game that was sort of science fiction and so we had some very early concepts of tanks and jeeps and super marines and stuff like that um that's the uh, that's how it started and when i first saw it i was just doing some sound design for for them just so they had something they had some engine noises and explosions and rocket firings and then uh at some point we got this opportunity to, to uh show something show something at mac world new york in 1999 and steve jobs was going to introduce this new thing and by that point we had figured out that first person was a, a cooler uh uh, camera and uh, the game itself was probably going to be more of an action shooter rather than than a real-time strategy game so we uh, got something that worked as quickly as possible and uh, we needed to have some music that was going to sell it you know make people be excited about this universe so as I talked to at that point it was Joe Staten and Jason Jones I just asked what sort of emotions should this world have what what sort of emotions do we want the audience to have and um, the feelings that we came up were ancient epic and and I always get this mysterious. wrong mysterious yeah yeah I've said that a million times but anyway those were the, the words that were used and um, so as I thought about what we didn't have much time to come up with something to record and I thought well monks are, are ancient I will go ahead and, and record some people singing monk chants and uh, I was the one singing uh, along with Mike and three other guys who sang jingles for us so they did TV commercials for us and so that's how we came up with the monks and um, the rest of the theme sort of followed from that I wanted something that would be really powerful with big drums and, and chugging cellos and uh, that's how we that's where the halo theme came from okay. it's a good word <laughs> we, we was all excited by the music halo music did Jason Jones give you any direction for the music uh, when you start? Uh, you say I want uh, bah, this, this. I want an ocean music or technologic music. Uh. Yeah, I, I absolutely will not listen to Jason when it comes to his actual music opinions, and he he knows that. So it's actually a good relationship. What what uh, what Jason tends to do is just tell me the the feelings that he wants the music to evoke, and uh, we've spent a lot of time. I've spent a lot of times playing different music for him and different styles, and I just watch to see what sort of reaction he has. How does he respond emotionally to different kinds of music? And um, this goes all the way back to the myth, the Fallen Lords days, when Jason really didn't know what he wanted, and he didn't even know if he wanted music in myth. And I said, Jason, we really need to have music for the narration parts of myth so let me let me just write some music for you and, and i'll play it for you and you can see how it responds and it was a, a really sort of lonely cello piece and uh, he he ended up loving that so i knew that i could go in a more classical direction or i could do you know tech uh, techno music and electronica and i knew he would he appreciated all of that so i knew i he had a wide range of of musical tastes uh, at one point, I did this piece uh, for Siege of Madrigal, which is a very simple piano piece. And he's like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't think piano is going to work. And I'm like, no, Jason, trust me on this. Piano is going to be good. So uh, that's actually one of the reasons why I used that particular piece, the Siege of Madrigal. I put it as an Easter egg in every game we've ever done. So you can find that piece someplace. Part of that is just to sort of poke Jason because he, he didn't like that piece at first. So now he likes it. Yeah. Uh, in Air Force DST, we we saw you dance yeah, uh, yeah. with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know they were doing that. That was uh, an Easter egg that came as a shock to me. So uh, you, it was not. Uh, well, I, what you, happened was uh, I had put that piece of music in that location, mm -hmm. and nobody had found it. Uh, and my guys here knew where I'd put it, and so when I I think I had a contest on whatever. Twitter or the Marty Army, like first person to find it, nobody'd found it yet. Mm -hmm. And somebody found it, except they did it on Legendary. And apparently, of course, they knew that I would probably never play through this section of the game on Legendary, which was true. Um, 
if you play it on legendary you get the the extra bonus of seeing me disco dance to to that so that was a joke an internal joke to get me back from the guys here it was pretty funny okay. so you speak about easter egg and um we we heard a siege of madrigal in a lot of, of music mm -hmm. maybe i don't pronounce uh, yeah, siege, yeah. siege of madrigal siege, siege of madrigal yeah. what's th what's this music uh, i mean we heard we heard it in the uh, Halo One, Halo Two, and Three. Uh, yeah. I don't know in Halo DST, but in Reach, in uh, so what is this music? Well, like I said, it was actually a piece that was all the way back to Myth: The Fallen Lords. So it was a it was actually called the Siege of Madrigal. It was a level that you played in the game, and and at the beginning of that level, as the narration is going by, that piece of that piano piece of music is playing. And I ended up sort of revisiting that piece for for Myth 2. And uh, I think the only, probably the only game that I didn't sneak that piece in was Oni. I think that was before I thought about doing uh, musical Easter eggs. So uh, we did it from Halo all the way through yeah. Reach. Okay. What's your favorite Halo music you have made? You know, people have asked me that a lot. I'd ha I would say that the one that I probably have the softest spot in, spot in my heart for is the very first one we did for Macworld, and that's because it was the first piece. Um, there was no other music that preceded that, and uh, it went over so well and the, with the audience and with the fans online. And, and as soon as that happened, we knew that maybe this could be a, you know, a successful, popular game. Um, but there have been a, tons of pieces that I've worked on since then in the Halo uh you know lexicon of music and uh it, it, i just there's a lot of them i just love and sometimes i listen to them and i'm like oh wow i for completely forgot about doing that piece as a matter of fact that's why um i think it was i think it's the piece called unforgotten there's a there's a piece called unforgotten which is a really nice piece it's in ODST, no? it's uh i think i've used it twice i think it was in halo 2 and halo 3 um I love your music, but I don't. I don't. I think there was a. I think it was called Unforgotten in Halo Two, and then Never Forget was revisited in. The reason it was called Unforgotten is because I actually forgot about it. It was written. It was sort of produced a little bit, and we were getting towards the end of production on the thing, and I'm like, Oh wow, here's that piece I forgot about. So I called it Unforgotten. It was a good piece. I don't know why, but sometimes, in the course of writing and producing, whatever it is now, like. 20 hours of music whatever it's been over the last 10 years um you just can't i can't keep all the music in my head i forget things so there it is so, did you make some music you you for halo and you delete them after you have made him you have made this music Say that again. so you you compose the music and say, yeah it's very good music and uh, you finish this music but you you don't make you don't put in in the halo oh, game right well, uh, one of the one of my favorite pieces from Halo One was actually the Halo One love theme, which you probably haven't heard. But I, I released it one time on the web. It was a nice, very loving, romantic sounding piece on piano. Uh, of course, I wrote it early in the in the in the process of writing the game, and uh, I was I just kept hoping there'd be a scene that would give you some sort of romantic feelings. But in Halo, there are no romantic feelings, so there was no place to put love theme in. Uh, maybe in Halo 4 yeah, with yeah. Master Chief and Cortana. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not doing Halo 4. Yeah, <laughs> it's sadly. <laughs> <laughs> do you think it's uh, Skywalker's is a good orchestra? So do you think they will make a uh, very, very good work on the reorchestration of your music? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing it. Uh, you don't heard uh, already the, those music? Okay. Ah, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Are you surprised? Yeah, very surprised. I I think you you work with FIFA industry for the real station. Yeah. Okay. No problem. <laughs> so so a lot of fans want know something. You you have made Halo Three ODST and Halo Witch because because you want to make this game and not because Microsoft m uh, say we have to make two another game. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we. You know, if we had been completely independent from the moment we made Halo 1, uh, it's quite possible we would have, as Bungie, we might have made different decisions along the way, but we never did anything that we didn't want to do. So some of it was, I mean, even being uh, bought by Microsoft was a decision we agreed with and we wanted to do it. But once you are owned by another company, then you have to sort of 
figure out, like, they want this, we want that, compromise, figure out what we want. And that was one of the reasons why we also thought it would be great to be independent again. So we wanted to have more control over what we created. And, you know, a good example of that is, you know, redoing Halo 1. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we, we were independent from Microsoft, and, and that was no longer something that they wanted to involve us with. And, and we're working on the next thing. So that's, that's their thing. say there was no compromise in the Bungie story with uh, Microsoft? Mm-hmm. There will never. Do you think there will have compromise in the future of Hello franchise with uh, 243? Yeah, I I have absolutely no opinion about that. I mean, I, I've talked to the guys at 343 and I think that they should, uh, you know, do what they think is right and have as much integrity and they're good artists and they're they're good programmers and designers and uh you know they they're all employees of microsoft and they're going to do what they need to do to be good employees of microsoft and i'm a i am a halo fan so i'm really looking forward to what what they do with halo and i'm looking forward to playing the new halo and i'm looking forward to playing halo anniversary so that's that's a very interesting project because it's what we created, except it's been redone and reimagined by a company. What's the name of it? There's some company in on the East Coast that did the. Sorry. Saber. Saber, Saber Interactive, and then our friends down in in Texas, uh, Certain Affinity, have re redone the maps from multiplayer. So uh, certain Affinity and Saber Interactive have, from what I can tell, we haven't. I haven't actually played the game or seen it yet. So I've only seen the videos, and it looks like it's going to be fun. And I'm looking forward to hearing and playing it. You will play this game? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love the game. Maybe we can make a co-op on this okay. game. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you can leave your unique touch on the next Bungie game music? Yeah, uh, that's the plan. Yeah, I mean, uh, if if uh, if things go according to plan, which of course is what I'm assuming. Um, I'm 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 very excited about the next game and it's it's you know all new concepts and it's all new music and you know it's 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 a really creative dream for us to to really start again, start over, see if we can do it again. So uh, if we can't leave a unique uh, imprint on the next thing then we failed. <laughs> This game, it's a, a new beginning for Bungie. It's a, it's a new intellectual uh, property and uh, new games. It, we won't see anything of Halo in your next game, uh, unless it's just by accident. <laughs> maybe an Easter egg, like you. Are. <laughs> maybe have, maybe you have a little message for the French community. We love, we love you. <laughs> Je t'aime. No, that's not right. Is that right? Je t'adore. Close. Yeah. Chew is good. Chew? The time is more, I love you. Oh, and uh, that's too, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's not <laughs> <laughs> You know, they, they will be very jealous in France. Uh, <laughs> I'm afraid they kill me. <laughs> so, yeah. Bye, bye. So, uh, you... So um, I wanted to know. Um, you have. You say you can be uh, creative. You can be creative uh, with the new project mm-hmm. uh, again. Uh, but you said you was an Hello, an Hello fan too. Mm-hmm. Uh, why did you choose to uh, stay at Bungie and uh, do not go to Three Four Three like uh, Shiska or uh, many other people that uh, make this? So, just to correct the uh, the impression that that people chose to go to three four three, there are very few that actually from Bungie chose to go to three four three. That's just because I think most of the people at Bungie were really excited about staying with Bungie, and I'm one of those guys. I I have helped build Bungie since 1996. Uh, I'm excited about the guys at Bungie and the and, and the women at Bungie and and the the team at Bungie, which is growing, and the fact that we get to to own our own intellectual property from this point forward. This is our, the next thing we do, we're going to own. We're going to try to control it as much as possible. Um, 
that whenever you have to create something and then give it to somebody else because they own it, it means that you don't necessarily have the kind of control over its life that you wish you had. So even though I don't think we really have any regrets about some of the things that we've done or made or the decisions we've made, there's no regrets. It's really exciting to think about a future where we actually have more control over, you know, everything that's going to happen with this new universe. So that's just a more creative, uh, exciting thing for me personally and for the people who work at Bungie. And that's why we're doing it. So, Okay. So I have the, the answer. Okay, good. And you have a great place to oh. make great music. Absolutely. <laughs> I think I have three questions. Three sure, questions? sure, sure. I don't want to take a lot of your time. That's all right. So, um, what did you think about the work of uh, Stephen Rippey for Halo Wars? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, Stephen Rippey. Um, I, I, th th I, I didn't really get to hear all of it. I didn't play all the way through the game. It just was one of those things. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of uh, uh, real-time strategy games. Um, um, But that doesn't mean I didn't like it. I did like it. And as a matter of fact, Stephen was really nice. He talked to me while he was working on it. And I also encouraged him to, like, you know, have his own vision, not not be saddled by trying to, you know, copy or do something similar to what I had done. I think he's a really good composer, and he needed to just do what he wanted to do, and I think he really did. But he was always nice about it. When he came up to Seattle to do the final mix on it, he invited me to the mix, and I got to sit and listen to a lot of the music while it was being mixed, and I thought it was great. Uh, his work was very good, yeah. seriously. I, I like the Halo music, uh, maybe much better than Halo music. <laughs> <in it. laughs> so I think it's all. Yeah, you say hello to the French community. It's uh, it's all. We're finished. Okay. Uh, thanks, Martin. All right. Au revoir. <laughs>